Okay. All right, guys. Uh, this is the first class, and I've sort of given you an outline of what we're going to do. Uh, today we're going to talk about primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and the limited palette using a warm version of each one of these and a cool version, and black and white. So we're talking about not using more than eight colors to create all the colors we need. Um, we're gonna, we'll, we'll touch on color properties a little bit, which have to do with uh, value, uh, intensity, uh, covering power of the, of the color, and whether it's warm or cool. And uh, we're going to start today in the second demo. I'm going to show you how to start building up an underpainting using this simple still life we have over here. Uh, this would be a classical procedure where we build up an underpainting first, and then we slowly uh, build color uh, and paint on top of it. And then uh, for the rest of the course, set week, the second week, we're going to talk about secondary colors and tertiary colors and building paint up on your uh, little uh, still life that, that we're going to be working on. Third, third week, we'll talk about impressions, color theory, intensity, and value. The fourth week, we'll talk about uh, glazing and scumbling in detail. So each week, we're going to progressively get a little more uh, complicated and uh, work towards finishing the still life and the painting that you guys are working on. Uh, fifth week, I'm going to go over composition uh, for all types of paintings. Uh, we'll talk about the golden rule, focal, focal point, balance. Uh, and then the sixth week, we'll just review the whole thing, uh, and it'll be an open session. You can paint anything you want. Okay, let me uh, go over the, again, the primary colors that we're going to use here. Uh, you're going to see these in your notes. You're going to have a little color chart like this. And you're going to have uh, what the different captions mean. Like, for instance, uh, the six colors that I, I, want, I wanted you to use uh, uh, are we, basically uh, we have a red version, uh, a cool red and a warm red. Of, uh, and then uh, same with yellow and blue. So the warm red would be cadmium red light. Uh, the cool red would be lizard crimson. Okay, warm means it's towards the orange or yellow. Cool means it's towards blue or green. For the yellows, we have cadmium yellow medium. That's a, a warm uh, yellow. And then we got yellow ochre. That's a cool, a cool, a cool, and also a dull yellow. Uh, for blues, we have ultramarine blue. That's the warm blue. It's towards the red. And then for the cool blue, we have phthalo blue. This also could have been cobalt blue, but I'd rather use phthalo blue because it's pretty much almost the same uh, hue. Hue means color. And I've also had a phthalo green, which uh, we're actually going to mix greens next week. I'm going to show you how to mix a whole variety of greens. I've added this in because these two are very relatively inexpensive, okay? The cadmiums are expensive, so these two would be uh, fairly expensive. Um, now, I've also have some secondary colors here that some of these... It's actually cheaper to buy them than to mix them. For instance, all the earth tones, the browns, burn umber, burnt sienna, tierra rose, raw sienna, raw umber, you should actually buy these because they're basically, essentially it's dirt mixed with linseed oil. It's easier, it's easier and cheaper to buy them than mix them. For instance, here I'm showing you how I can mix essentially uh, something close to uh, uh, burnt, uh, it's, it's, it's basically close to burnt sienna. Um, and Tierra Rose, and I've actually taken the three primary colors, cadmium red light, cadmium yellow medium, and ultramarine blue, mixed them together in almost equal amounts, and that's the brown I get. But I've used two, I've essentially used two cadmium colors, which are expensive, to make a very cheap brown color, which I could have bought uh, either by using, made this either with burn, uh, using a little bit of uh, Tierra Rose and burnt sienna. So the point is, it's actually cheaper just to buy the earth tones. And again, I've done the same thing here with the with the uh, with the cool colors. So it's a lizard, crimson, yellow, walker, and phthalo blue. I mix the three of those together, and I get something that looks like a a, a, a brown green, which is basically very similar to raw umber. Um, I sort of listed the secondary colors in sort of the order that I use them. I use a lot of burnt umber, burnt sienna. Uh, this is Grumbracher red. This is a pure red. This is lemon yellow. I use that occasionally. This is viridian green. I can actually see it's very similar to phthalo green. Naples yellow, which is a lead-based yellow. I very rarely use. You can see you could actually mix that with a little white from yellow ochre. Uh, this is dioxine purple. I use that occasionally, but I'm going to show you how to mix the same color uh, with, the, with, the, with the primaries. Cobalt blue I rarely use. Terra red I rarely use. <coughs> Raw sienna I can actually mix from yellow ochre. And burnt sienna I rarely use that. 
And raw umber I hardly ever use, but there are a lot of artists that swear by it and they use it. They'll use raw umber rather than burnt umber for, uh, for their uh, under. <coughs> okay. Now the next thing before I do the demo, let me cover one other thing. And I want to show you how to mix. We're going to start the underpainting with burnt sienna. In the past, I've used burnt sienna or burnt, burnt umber to, to do the underpainting. And you can actually darken this by mixing in ultramarine blue. So I'm actually showing you that with roughly equal amounts, I can get a black by mixing either burnt sienna and ultramarine blue or burnt umber and ultramarine blue. I can also get a very, very intense black mixing alizarin crimson and phthalo green. Okay, again, these were in the first uh, row. That the alizarin crimson was one of the uh, six colors I wanted you to buy. And the phthalo green was the optional one because it was so cheap. Rather than mix the green, you just buy it. And again, you get a very intense black. And I've, I've actually uh, listed these three blacks here and compared them to ivory black, which again, you should buy a tube of because again, it's very cheap. And it's a blue black. Uh, and again, you can see that my intent, really intense black is pretty close, maybe a little bit more intense than the uh, ivory black. Uh, later on, uh, everyone's always interested in flesh tones. They always ask me, how do you mix flesh tones? And I figured I'd just lump that on here because essentially, uh, you're using primary colors to do it. You can take any red, any yellow, and any white, and you'll get a flesh tone. So I showed you three ways to do that. Yellow ochre, cadmium red light, and white will give me a flesh tone. Okay, these, these are again in your, uh, the ones that I wanted you to get, uh, the six colors that I wanted you to get plus white. I could have mixed, uh, if I took a little cadmium red light and put in some burnt sienna, I'd get something that's called Tierra Rose, or you could buy a tube of it. And if I mix that with yellow ochre and white, I get a duller flesh tone. And to make it even duller and darker, I can take this flesh tone, okay, and mix in a little uh, burnt umber and, and ultramarine blue, and I get even a darker flesh tone. And then, it, depending on the amounts of the colors I mix in, I could get any flesh tone or any, any color. I could match any color skin uh, in existence with just this limited tone. Okay, so. Uh, uh, That'll be it for this part of uh, the demo, and I'm going to go in and start uh, an underpainting on this little still life shortly. Okay, cut it, Nick.